Welcome back to our channel. Today I will show you how I set up my solar powered battery backup for my pond. The cost was about $450 US. It is a small price to pay to save your valuable and unique koi. I put this together after my water pump flooded during a summer monsoon rainstorm. We lost a beautiful Sanke koi that jumped out during this outage. This system has been running continuously with no problems for over two years. The water pump draws about 150 watts of power. This is too costly due to the large bank of batteries required to run this continuously in an outage. I wanted a system that was completely automatic when I'm out of town and had reserves for at least three days. So if the power went out, my water pump stays off but the pond is aerated only with my air pump. I replaced my air pump with this efficient 17 watt unit. It is strong enough to aerate my bottom filter and keep the koi alive, even in the heat of summer. This air pump runs completely on solar power. Now to the solar panel. This is a monocrystalline solar panel and is good reviews on Amazon, as well as being a good value. I'm not endorsing this brand, I'm sure the other brands were equivalent. Monocrystalline solar panels have the highest efficiency rates, typically in the 15 to 20 percent range. This high efficiency rate means they produce more power per square foot, and therefore very space efficient. Since they are monocrystalline and perform better in heat, these panels are projected to last up to 25 years. I bought a 100 watt panel to keep the cost down and ensure it had enough capacity even on cloudy days to charge the batteries. My backyard faces south, which is perfect for solar, and Las Vegas has an average of 294 sunny days per year. Next, I looked at the mounting system. I could not find any that had the versatility that I needed at a reasonable price, so I went to my local hardware store, bought a one and a quarter inch wide by 18 gauge galvanized slotted angle iron, and a one inch by one sixteenth inch thick aluminum angle, and I cut them in half and attached the slotted angle to my wall. I mounted a solar panel lengthwise. I attached the top of the panel first to the slotted angle iron. And I drilled my aluminum angle with the desired solar angles. I knew that the panel had to be angled differently during different times of the year for maximum efficiency. I googled solar panel angle calculator and found this. I made this mounting angles holes for winter and summer since I did not think I wanted to climb up a ladder to change the solar angle so often. So far the mounts on the panel has withstood gusty winds up to 55 these clips will show you how I mounted the panel to my bracing on the wall. There are two types of solar chargers or controllers. Pulse width modulation or PWM controllers are built on the time-tested technology. They are used for years in older solar installations and are well established. PWM controllers are durable and simple. Maximum power point tracking or MPPT controllers offer a potential increase in charging efficiency up to 30%. Solar panels in general can deliver far more voltage than is required to charge the batteries, which are typically 12 volts. The MPPT controller converts the excess voltage into amps, so the charge voltage can be kept at the optimal level for the 12 volt batteries 
while the time required to fully charge the battery is reduced. I used two deep cycle golf batteries for my battery bank. I wanted the most capacity which equals to a more run time, so I bought two 6 volt batteries hooked in series resulting in a 12 volt battery bank. The capacity is confusing and took a lot of research to make sense of. I'll get into that a little later on. I was too lazy to build a box for the battery bank and just left it under a table in my covered patio. I honestly haven't touched it since installation. Even with this neglect, it seems to be fine in the weather streams of Las Vegas. Here is a simplified diagram of my solar power battery backup for my pond. First is the solar panel that outputs to the MPT charger. Then the charger goes to a battery bank. This charger has the ability to sense when the battery is running too low and cuts the power to prevent damage to the battery bank. The stored electricity from the battery bank goes back to the charger that outputs to the AC inverter. This converts DC power from the battery to AC power for my air pump. And finally, you have Happy Koi. Thank you for watching.